What exactly is documentary photography? It's not as simple as just saying you capture candid reality. Or is it? It's complex and situational. It's a question I've been trying to answer for years now. I've always described my approach to photography as being documentary, probably more in line with a street photographer. But I'm not a photojournalist. I'm not on the front line of war. I don't photograph major world events that involve political action. I'm not documenting disparities, and I'm not spending my time with famous people documenting their lives for magazines and newspapers alike. Are my photos even worth documentary status? Am I a documentary photographer, or am I just some wannabe? I don't think I'm alone in this confusion. Look up documentary photography online. You'll find a million different definitions, many of which are wildly different from the others. Photography has a long history. The first photographic camera was said to have been created in 1727, after a series of experiments proved its ability to alter the visual state of salts. But the first documented photograph ever created was not for 100 years later, until the 1820s. It was captured on a sheet of light-sensitive substances. Fast forward only about 50 years, and you no longer need to carry any heavy materials or glass plates to create photographs. All you needed was this dry gel on paper, or film. In 1888, George Eastman's Kodak camera went on the market with the slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. Suddenly, people like you and me could make photographs. This period gave birth to documentary photography techniques. You began to see a shift from just photographing landscapes to photographing cities and their crises. Iteration after iteration after iteration brought us all the way to the birth of the digital camera. Documentary photography continued to evolve throughout all of these iterations, all the way to what it is today. Documentary photography presents itself in many forms. Historically speaking, its role was to capture a moment truthfully with the aim to tell a story about something or the world, often narrowing time down to a decisive, poignant moment. It was a tool used to garner new ways of thinking, a way to elicit emotional reactions to the unthinkable of our world. It became a tool that presented the reality of life unfamiliar to those viewing the photos. It was the ultimate proof of tougher times and hardship. And yet, I have so many questions still. Does documentary photography only apply to those who are photographing the most extreme human events? When does documentary photography become not documentary? Where is that threshold? Are environmental portraits really documentary photography? Is documentary photography merely just photographing life as it happens in front of you, unaltered? Or is it more than that? What does documentary photography mean in the modern age when computers are able to generate lifelike images on command from nothing? Surely that's not documentary, right? The answers to these, unfortunately, are not concrete. Let's break it down though and see if what we do personally can be classified as documentary photography. The street photographer. They're arguably the most popular and common form of documentary photography today. Street photography is as loosely defined as picking up your camera and photographing your neighborhood, your city, people near you, and the things that they may or may not be doing. Street photography does not exclusively feature people within the frame, though. It can also focus on traces left by humanity that say something about life. I actually made a full video about William Eggleston's photographic legacy that loosely discusses all of this. Check it out. Next up is the photojournalist. They're similar to the street photographer, but with more of a focus on current events and news subjects. Next, the social documentary photographer. They're recording what the world looks like with a social or environmental focus. The typical goal of social documentary photography is to draw specific attention to certain societal needs and lead to some end result. Next, we have the environmentalist. They photograph environmental change and strain for the use of scientific research and proof. Their work is often used to display the extremes of human existence and the needs on our planet. And lastly, other forms that are often excluded but undeniably documentary, the wedding photographer, the family photographer, and the portrait photographer under the umbrella of each of these. 
My initial thesis coming into this video was that documentary photography could not be merely just classified as photographing reality as it happens in front of you, unaltered. I mean, let's look at this. Portrait photography, in many cases, is technically documentary photography. But if you really think about it, portrait photography often requires a lot of altering of reality to make the photograph. There is a recognition between the subject and the photographer that there is a camera that is going to do something more than merely just observe. It is going to create an image of which is going to display a certain emotion, a complexion, and is often altered in the sense that there is a pose designed to bring out the true character of that person. Therefore, that isn't a real candid moment. It was altered. The photographer was there to direct it and that moment wouldn't have happened without the photographer directing it. Now let's flip it on its head. Those people do really exist. A pose may be struck, but the essence of their existence is captured. That portrait may actually portray a real life and real situation perfectly. By technicality and as confusing as it is, that photograph functions as a documentary photograph. Perhaps the truth is that documentary photography has more to do with the story that you're telling rather than the photograph that you're creating. It's not about just experiencing a moment, but living in that story, immersing yourself in it. Ultimately, it is up to the photographer, both you and me, to speak visual truth into our work and to be honest about the process of making it. Documentary photography isn't limited to those who are photographing the most extreme human events. Merely just photographing your family is documentary photography. If you want to call yourself a documentary photographer, you have every right to do so. I don't think there's an argument to be had otherwise. This video is part one of a two-part series about documentaries that I'm making. Um, it's an explosion of research, hours and hours spent huddled in a corner, contemplating whether or not I even wanted to do this. It took a long time to make this video. Your support and, um, well, ultimately your insight is the most valuable part of all of this though. Leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel. Um, I want to know your thoughts. Give it to me straight. Don't hold back. This is probably going to take a really long time to get to any sort of objective answer about any of the questions that I asked in this video, but that's kind of the fun of it. I'm excited to continue to, well, dig a little deeper on this. So let's do it.